Hi everyone, and welcome to Memory Keeping Monday. I'm Lisa Truesdell, a garden girl at twopeasinabucket.com. This week I'm going to be talking about mixing and matching pattern paper and embellishment lines, and I'm also going to give you a few fun ways to use the new mistable thickers from Studio Calico, available exclusively at Two Peas right now. I wasn't sure what I wanted to cover in this week's video, so I asked for help finding a topic on Twitter. A couple of friends said they'd love a peek into the process of how I pull together a page kit. I've started each of my Memory Keeping Monday videos with a photo of the product I'll be using, so I thought it sounded like a great idea to give you a little more explanation on how I make those choices. When I'm pulling together a mix of manufacturers, I always start with one or two bold pattern papers. I love the color scheme in these pink paisley prairie hill papers and I want to use it as a starting point for the rest of my product choices. The easiest way to bring in more pattern is with neutral papers, so I've pulled a few of my favorites. I've got this die cut paper from Jenny Bolin, a white wood grain from Crate Paper, a craft ledger from Pebbles, I think I might use this one for a background. I've got this wood grain from Echo Park and a cream and black map from Crate Paper, as well as a gray and white polka dot from Dear Lizzie. I've chosen all of these in tones that match the neutral backgrounds in my colored pattern papers from Pink Paisley. Now I'm ready to bring in a little color. I've got papers here from Crate Paper and Studio Calico. The dark blue in this herringbone is a fairly close match to this chevron pattern, and the orange is similar to the tones in these papers. While they aren't exact matches, they coordinate pretty well, and I think they'll look good together. I also like to throw in a little color that you can't find anywhere else in the papers. I love this green polka dot from Crate, and I think it just adds a little fun to our color scheme. I'll repeat this color later on so it doesn't look totally out of place. I'm ready to pull in some embellishments for my page. I like to start with the basics, and this sheet of labels from Crate Paper caught my eye. The green Today sticker will be a perfect match for this polka dot paper. I also went ahead and grabbed the pink paisley stickers that match the pattern papers that we started with. I always love to use tags on my pages, and I found a few in the Amy Tangerine sketchbook die cuts that would be a good match with the rest of the colors. Next up, I grabbed this wood grain banner from Studio Calico. I really like how the warmer tone of the wood goes with our pink paisley papers. I've been looking forward to using these Studio Calico mistable thickers. They're just chipboard with a white fabric finish and they'll take any mist, paint, or ink that you add to them. I'll be using both the alphabet and these shapes. The clouds and the suns will be a great match for the theme of my layout. Now I wanna pull in some small accents to finish off my kit. I've grabbed these star buttons from Bella Boulevard, a pack of brads from Dear Lizzie, and while most of them don't match, I really like this orange one and this yellow one. I'm pulling in these badges. I think I like the details one, or maybe I'll use the take note. And my very favorite accent right now, these little veneer stars. They're just the perfect neutral finishing touch for any page. I can't seem to finish anything without washi lately, so I've grabbed three this time. A green one to tie in with our other green papers, a yellow chevron, and a gray stripe. I like to do a little bit of stamping on my pages, and today I'll be using two sets. These sunshine stamps from Allie Edwards. I like how they coordinate with this pack of thickers. I'm also going to be using these stamps. They're an exclusive for two peas from Studio Calico. They just have a really good mix of images and words that'll work well on almost any page. When you look at the finished collection, you'll notice that I chose just a few coordinated colors, all pulled from the pink paisley papers, and I balanced them with a lot of neutral patterns and embellishments. 
If you use this formula, you can pull together any manufacturers you want on your page. I like to start my layouts by just adding elements to my background and getting an idea for how I want them all to work together. I started here with my photo and balanced it with a square of the pink paisley paper on the opposite sides. I added my sun and my clouds up to the top and then I cut a series of squares of pattern paper to bridge across the middle of the page. This left me with an area in the middle that was just perfect to add my title. Next, I made sure I had a triangle of green with the pattern paper, the Today sticker, and a little bit of tape. Once I had everything in place on my page, I decided I wanted to use this mask to miss the background of the layout. Now, in order to do that, everything is going to have to come off the page. This is a little bit of a pain, but to make it easier on myself, I like to take a pencil and mark the spots of all the main elements. It just makes it a little easier to put it all back together once the misting is complete. I like to do all of my misting at once, but before I do, I want to add a stamp detail to these mistable clouds. I'm using an aqua dye based ink and just stamping a text stamp from the Ali Edwards sunshine set in an all over pattern on the clouds. You can try this technique on any of the mistable thickers. It's a fun way to add a little extra detail. With my stamping done, I'm going to go ahead and pull out my mist box. It's just an old shipping box that I like to do all of my misting into so that I can keep it off the rest, rest of my desk surface. For these clouds, I'm using the Studio Calico Shine Mist. It's just a sheer shimmery mist that'll add a little glitter to our clouds. It would also be fun to light mist these in a lighter blue, so we have a tone-on-tone -tone look with the stamping that we just did. For my sun shape, I just want to go with one color. So I'll just add it to my box and mist it a few times with this yellow mist. I'm holding it about eight inches above my surface and I spray it a few times. You can see it's given me a nice even color on the fabric. I'm going to spray my alphabet with a gray mist and when I'm working with a whole title like this I like to line them up on a piece of scrap paper just in case there's any variations in the shade of the misting. You can always go back and add more mist, so I like to do it lightly at first. If you like this splotchy look, you can keep it, or you can go back later and add a little bit more. I'm ready to spray my background now. I'm going to go ahead and use those pencil lines that we drew earlier to help me make sure I get the mask in exactly the right spot. I'm using the shine mist again. I just want a really subtle tone-on-tone -tone look. I'm missing a few times for different angles, all concentrating right on the mask so that that's where the majority of the shimmer is. It'll be really hard to see in this video, so I'll make sure to get you a close up when we get to the end. With my mist dry, I've gone ahead and added most of my elements back to my background using those lines we penciled in earlier. Now I'm going to get ready to do some stamping. You can see that I've gone ahead and laid out my clear stamps right on my background. This lets me check the sizing before I commit the ink to paper. I'm going to start out with this phrase stamp. It'll be part of my title. Next, I'm going to use this shine on phrase on this hand cut banner. I'm moving it off my photo. I know there's no way I could get a clean image with the edge of that picture right under it. For my last stamp, I'm going to go a little out of my comfort zone. I'll admit that 90% of my stamping is done with black ink, just because it's easier. For this one, I'm going to use the same aqua that we used on the clouds and stamp it on some white wood grain paper. Once I've got my image, I'm going to go ahead and hand cut right around the edges. This stamp has a nice banner shape, 
and it will mimic the hand cut banners that I've added other places on this page. With that done, I want to add the date using this Dear Lizzie date stamper. I love that it has phrases alongside the months and days. I'm going to stamp it a few times above my photo without re-inking. I just really love this look right now. I've gone ahead and added my journaling and some machine stitching to the page, and now I'm ready to finish it off with some final embellishments. I love this little tag from Amy Tangerine. It says good times down at the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and slip it under this top border. I'll cut off the overhanging part so that I can use it on another page. I really wanted to be able to work this wood grain banner in, but I just couldn't find a good place for it. I decided to go ahead and cut off two of the circles, and I'm going to use them as accents right along the side of my photo. They're the perfect size, and I love that they're pre-stitched. I'm going to finish off that side of the page with a neutral brad from my mind's eye and one of these little veneer stars. When I added this little piece of paper from Jenny Bolin, I knew it would be the perfect place to add an embellishment later. I'm adding the Dear Lizzie orange brad and I think alongside it, I'm going to pull in two more of these veneer stars on the other squares of pattern paper. For my final embellishment, I'm going to add a star button and a brad to the top of this square of pattern paper. This brad will complete a visual triangle with the other two brads we added earlier. We've also got one going with the veneer stars. Here's a better look at the effect of the shine mist on our craft background. It's a subtle look with the mask, but really gorgeous in person. You can also see the stamping and color on those Studio Calico mistable thickers. Thank you for joining me here today. I hope I've inspired you to dig into your stash and create your own page kit. I'd love to see how many manufacturers you can mix and match. Have a great day. And join us again next week for another Memory Keeping Monday here at 2 in a Bucket.